Good afternoon everyone. We are group 12 and we will be talking about sponges and placozoa. First, we'll be talking about the origins of multicellularity and sponges. Sponges are the simplest multicellular animals. Because cells are the ele elementary units of life, organisms larger than unicellular organisms arose as aggregates of such building units. Sponge body is an assemblage of cells embedded in extracellular matrix and supported by a skeleton of minute needle-like spicules and protein. Multicellularity has many advantages over increasing the mass of a single cell. Because cell surfaces exchange molecules with the environment, dividing a mass into smaller units greatly increases the surface area available for metabolic activities. Multicellularity is a highly adaptive path toward a larger body size. Strangely, while sponge sponges are multicellular, their organization is quite distinct from that of other metazoans. We will now be talking about origin of animals, metazoa. Animals traditionally were divided into single-celled animals, or protozoans, and multicellular animals, or metazoans. Because protozoans belong outside the animal kingdom, metazoan is now synonymous with animal. Animals fall within the opistoconclade clade along with fungi, coenoflagellates, and a few other groups. The sister group to the animals is the coenoflagellates according to several phylogenies using molecular characters. We will now be talking about coenoflagellates. Coenoflagellates are solitary or colonical aquatic eukaryotes with each cell carrying a flagellum surrounded by a color of microvilli. Coenoflagellate cells are noteworthy because they strongly resemble sponge feeding cells called coenocytes. It is very interesting to find a colored cell used in filter feeding in a colonial eukaryote and in a sponge, whose ancestral lineage represents an early divergence from the lineage of all other animals. This is the characteristic of an adult sponge. Adult sponges have deceptive, deceptively simple bodies. They are aggregation of several different cell types, including coenocytes, held together by an extracellular matrix. Most sponge bodies are not symmetrical, but some appear radial. A sponge body has neither a mouth nor a digestive tract. Thus, we expect it to have a simple genetic architecture, perhaps reminiscent of the first animals. Sponges are similar to other animals in that they are multicellular, heterotrophic, lack cell walls, and produce sperm cells. But unlike other animals, they lack true tissues and organs. Some of them are radially symmetrical, while some of them are mostly asymmetrical. Form and function. Sponges feed primarily by collecting suspended particles from water pumped through internal canal systems. Sponges non-selectively consume food particles. In phagocytosis, coanocytes take the smallest particles, while in pinocytosis, they acquire protein molecules. Pinacocytes and archaeocytes, two other cell types, also play a role in sponge feeding. The process of sponge feeding. Water enters through a multitude of dermal ostea in the pinacoderm. Inside the body, the coanocytes collar, which compromises many microvilli, catches food particles from the water that moves past it. The use of this collar is one form of suspension feeding. Three types of canal systems, ascanoids, sycanoids, and lucanoids. These are the three types of canal systems, and they depend on the placement of coanocytes, thus affecting the capture of food. Ascanoids have the simplest organization and only occur in the class Chalcispongi. They can only collect water directly adjacent to the sponge cell. Ascanoids have a single large osculum. They are small in tube shape so that the food and water in its central cavity is accessible to coanocytes. The second type are sycanoids. Sycanoids look somewhat like larger ascanoids. They have a tubular and a single large osculum, just like ascanoids. Unlike ascanoids, though, sycanoids have a thicker and more complex sponge cell lining. This lining is folded outward, increasing the surface area of the wall, which also increases the surface area covered by coanocytes. During development, the sycanoids pass through an ascanoid stage providing evidence 
that these sponges were derived from an ancestor with an asconoid body plan. Sicanoids occur in class Chalcispongy and some members of class Hexactinellida. The last and most complex are leuconoids. The increase of the sponge size allows for a larger surface area of food collecting regions. Coanocytes line these regions and are able to effectively filter all the water present. We will now be talking about the types of cells in the sponge body. Sponge cells are arranged in the mesohyl or mesenchyme. The first type are coanocytes. Coanocytes line the flagellated canals and chambers and are ovoid cells with one embedded in mesohyl and the other exposed. This exposed end forms a filtering device for straining food particles from water. Particles that are too large are phagocytized by the cell body. Di digestion is entirely intracellular. Coanocytes also have a role in sexual reproduction. The second type are archaeocytes. Archaeocytes are amoeboid cells that move in the mesohyl. They can phagocytize at the pinacoderm and receive particles for digestion from coanocytes. They are also able to differentiate into other specialized types of cells, such as sclerolites, spongocytes, colencytes, and lophocytes. The third type of cell are pinacocytes. The arrangement of these cells in the pinacoderm are the closest thing to a true tissue in sponges. They are thin, flat, epithelial-like cells that cover the exterior and some interior surfaces of the sponge. Pinacocytes ingest food particles by phagocytosis at the sponge surface. They are somewhat contractile and help to regulate the surface area of a sponge. Cell independence, regeneration, and somatic embryogenesis. Sponges have a tremendous ability to repair injuries and restore lost parts. This process is called regeneration. Regeneration only applies to the wounded portion of the sponge. A complete reorganization of the structure and function of participating cells or bits of tissue is somatic embryogenosis. This allows them to change their shape or function as they develop into a new organism. Fragmentation is when a sponge breaks into parts that are each capable of becoming a new sponge. Fragmentation after regeneration is one form of a sexual reproduction in sponges. The other form of a sexual reproduction is bud formation. External buds, after reaching a certain size, may detach to form new sponges or remain on the parent to form colonies. Internal buds, aka gemmules, remain dormant when the parent animal dies, thus preserving the species during periods of freezing or severe drought. By escaping through mycopiles, they are then able to develop into new sponges. We will now be talking about sexual reproduction. In sexual reproduction, most sponges are monoecious. Sperm sometimes arise from coanocytes. In calci spongae and some dema spongae, oocytes also develop from coanocytes. In other demo sponges, gametes are derived from archaeocytes. Most sponges are viviparous, meaning after fertilization, the zygote is retained in and derives nourishment from its parent, and a ciliated larva is released. Other sponges are oviparous. These, this means both oocytes and sperm are released into the water. The free swimming larvae of most sponges are called parenchymula. Calci spongy are calciferous sponges, meaning their spicules are made out of calcium carbonate. Their spicules are either straight or have three to four rays. Their spicules often form a fringe around their osculum to discourage small animals from entering. These sponges also tend to be small, usually 10 centimeters or less in height, and are either tubular or V-shaped. They also come in many colors. In this class, all three types of canal systems are represented. All of the calcispongi live in marine waters. 
Examples are leukosidemia and clatrina. Hexactylida or hyalospongy contains the glass sponges. They are called glass sponges because their spicules are siliceous or are made of silica, a major component of glass. And these six rayed spicules join together to create networks that form a glass like structure. The name Hexactylida also comes from the fact that their spicules have six rays. These rays all point outward at right angles from each other from a central point. Hexactylida chambers are either psychonoid or leuconoid. The Hexactylida are very unique from the other classes of sponges. Hexactylida are syncytial. Syncytia are cells that have many nuclei inside of them, and they occur when a cell nucleus repeatedly divides without dividing the cytoplasm, or when many cells fuse together. This forms a continuous tissue with many nuclei, but with a shared cytoplasm. The body of a hexactinylated sponge is a single, continuous syncytial tissue called a trabecular reticulum. The largest syncytium reported in the animal kingdom is a glass sponge one meter in diameter. The trabecular reticulum is bilayered. Its structure can either be sheet-like or tubular. Depending on the structure, either in between the sheets or inside the tubes, is a collagenous mesohyl in which more specialized cell types occur, like archaeocytes and quanoblasts. Quanoblasts are unique cells that have two or more flagellated outgrowths called collar bodies. The flagellum of these collar bodies beat to drive the flow of water, similar to a quanocyte, where water flows over the collar bodies and food particles get collected. Hexactylida all live in marine waters, mostly in the deep sea. An example of a hexactylida is Euplectella. Class Demospongy. Demospongy contain 95% of living sponges. Like hexactinellida, their spicules are silicous, but are not six-rayed. Their spicules may be bound together by spongin or may be absent. All members of this class are leuconoid, except freshwater sponges. Their appearance varies. Some may be tall and finger-like, while others are low and spread. Some can even grow several meters in diameter. Freshwater sponges are widely distributed and well -oxygenated in well-oxygenated ponds and streams. They do reproduce sexually, but existing genotypes may also appear from genules. Class Homoceleromorpha Homoceleromorpha are marine sponges that occur in a range of colors. Since they live in cryptic habitats, they are often overlooked. They are more common near shore and do not occur in deep water. Formerly, they were classified as demospongy, but because of some unique features they possess, they have been placed in a class of their own. One such feature is a pinacoderm layer with a true basement membrane, or ECM. Homoceleromorpha are divided into two clades, one whose members lack spicules entirely and the other with spicules that do not form around a central longitudinal filament. Phylogeny and Adaptive Diversification Phylogeny The Devonian period saw rapid development of many glass sponges. Sponges are the sister taxon to a group composed of all other animals. Adaptive Diversification Their diversification centers largely on their unique water current system and its various degrees of complexity. Lastly, we'll be, we will be talking about the phylum Placozoa. The phylum Placozoa was proposed in 1971 by K.G. Grell to contain a single species, Trichoplax adherens, a tiny marine form. The body is plate-like and has no symmetry, no organs, and no muscular or nervous system. It also lacks both a basal lamina beneath the epidermis and an extracellular matrix, two features that were considered animal hallmarks. They divide asexually and produce warmer stages by budding. Sexual reproduction has been inferred from molecular evidence of genetic diversity within a clade.